everybody. Here I am with Vic, the East End Herbalist in uh, Regent's Park um, to check out this beautiful Magnolia Solangiana, which is a hybrid between Magnolia Denudata and Magnolia Liliflora. Um, so now I'm going to go into a kind of deep look at the phytochemicals of this plant and it's going to be a lot of long words and it's a lot of bioscience which actually doesn't always tally with traditional herbal medicine but the reason I'm going to talk about the chemicals of this plant is just so you get an idea of how kind of just fantastic and diverse in chemicals it is and also how ancient species of plants relate to modern day plants and I'll try and incorporate that as I talk about the different chemicals. And also to think that, you know, many um, modern drugs are synthesized from plant medicine, but when you use plant medicine, it's the totality of the chemicals in the plant that actually buffer each other, potentiate each other. And also that when you use plant medicine, um, every single tree specimen is going to be different in chemistry from each other even from this branch to that branch and um, some of the information I'll give is on bioscience which actually doesn't always reflect real life and the diversity of responses to plants in real life so I'm going to go into a bit of the chemistry now so one class of chemicals in magnolia grandifolia and a few other of the varieties are called the sesquiterpene lactones and one of them is costunolide, which is also found in lettuce. And costunolide has been costunolide has been studied for a wide range of biological effects through many pathways, including the prevention of neurodegeneration, such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. It's anti-allergenic. It's um, bone remodeling. It inhibits alopecia, and it's anti-diabetic. It's pulmonary protective, anti-parasitic, antiviral, and anti-helminthic. And anti-helminthic means that it stops um, worms living in the intestines. Beep. Another sesquiterpene lactone in the plant is called parthenolide. And parthenolide is quite famous for being in um, feverfew, which is called tanacetum parthenium and also tanacetum vulgari or tansy. And um, parthenolide is hot water soluble and it stimulates many processes which promote apoptosis, which is the programmed cell death of defunct cells. Parthenoloid also is anti-leishmania, and leishmania is a, a really horrible condition that causes like sort of mucus and pus lesions on the skin, then actually metastasizes around the body. So magnolia has been used as a traditional remedy for leishmania. Um, it also interferes with microtubule formation in the cell cycle of cancer cells. And parthenoloid is also an adiponectin receptor 2 agonist, which um, mediates numerous reactions um, that are anti-cancer and anti-diabetic, notably fatty acid oxidation and glucose uptake. I know this sounds really kind of gobbledygooky, but for people who are into... Um, biochemistry and bioscience it's actually you know really interesting it also has a chemical called santa marine which is anxiolytic and antidepressant it um, inhibits prostaglandins e2 tumor necrosis factor alpha interleukin beta and nuclear kappa factor b translocation and santa marines associated with anti-photoaging in um, human skin and photo aging in plants. Um, in cancer cell lines, Santa Marine is cytotoxic, means it kills dodgy cells. It's um, it's also cytostatic, so it stops cells from mutate from metastasizing. It blocks mitosis by reducing the uptake of thymidine and it's also antibacterial and specifically against mycobacterium tuberculosis. Mm. 
Another chemical in the plant is called rainosin, and this protects against dopamine-induced toxicity. So that would be associated with diseases like Parkinson's disease. It's also hepatoprotective. There is another group of chemicals in the plant which I've talked about previously called polyphenols and I've already spoken about magnolol and honochiol but the, they have um, other larger polyphenols such as caffeic acid and caffeic acid is one of those chemicals that's sort of anti-everything anti-cancer, anti-neoplastic, a thymidine and, uh, which is vitamin B1 antagonist Another polyphenol is called cyanidin, which is in many other plants, and it's found in berries, in the colour of flowers, um, and it's anti-proliferative, it protects cardiovascular health and helps with glucose regulation. Another famous um, polyphenol that's abundant in red onions is quercetin, and that's often um, the pink colour in magnolias. It's um, also very high in capers, in sorrel, in docks, and quercetin stimulates um, gastrointestinal mot motility for people with a really sluggish gut, and it promotes um, colonic fermentation for people who do not break down foods. Another polyphenol is camphorol, which is anxiolytic. Camphorol is very high in kale, in beans, in tea, in broccoli, again in capers and it's been attributed to being an anti-obesity, anti-cancer, cardioprotective, anti-diabetic and anti-oestrogenic chemical. The last polyphenol I'm going to mention is obavatol, which is largely extracted through the alcohol or the ethanolic extracts. And it's also a chemical that's present in um, white peony root, for those of you who are herbalists and obavatol enhances GABA receptor activity very similar to the benzodiazepines like diazepam but without the side effects and the effects of this include um, you know reducing anxiety being antispasmodic and anti-ulcer okay we're nearly wrapping up with all these chemicals and the ones we're doing now are the essential oils and they're very small molecules that are often quite smelly. Um, not always, but um, if you smell the flowers or the wood of magnolia, it's, it's, it's very aromatic. Um, so one of the chemicals in the essential oils of magnolia include borneal acetate, which is the smell of pine needles. And it's anti-inflammatory, anti-analgesic, um, antibiotic and sedative. Another um, small monoterpene is called camphene and it's camphene's present in nutmeg and it creates a cooling sensation in the body. It has a pungent odour. Um, it's also present in cannabis and binds with um, cannabis, cannabinoid receptors. I think it's CB2 receptors. It's anti-inflammatory, it's analgesic and it's antifungal. Um, Carophylline um, epoxide is another cannabinoid that's present in cannabis. It's present in black pepper and it's analgesic, mood elevating and binds to CB2 um, receptors. And interestingly, it increases your tolerance to the cold. Udecimol is uh, alpha udecimol, it's antiplasmodial. Udecimol beta is antifungal on soil-based pathogens and, and gamma udecimol is an anti-migraine cytotoxic chemical that works on the TRPA gene and um, actually plays a role in appetite control. Alpha-pinene is a bronchodilator, an analgesic anxiolytic that improves short-term memory and protects the liver and kidney and beta pinene is a euphoric and energetic um, essential oil that also exists in some strains of cannabis. Linalool is anti-anxiety um, and sedative and a GABA agonist. So as you can see, loads of the smelly constituents in this plant, you know, go along with the traditional effects of it being like a neuroprotective, calming plant. 
and just standing and being next to the plant you don't even need to take it you can feel kind of just like peaceful and blissed out because it just gives out that energy so we're finishing off this long gobbledygook sciencey nerdy plant chemical um, part of the video with alkaloids and alkaloids are uh, sort of famous chemicals for being quite strong drugs on the nervous system they have a nitrogen component to them and caffeine is an alkaloid cocaine is an alkaloid nicotine is an alkaloid and one of the famous ones in this plant is called aquaphene which also exists in water lilies and in lotuses and what's funny is that this plant actually looks a bit like a lotus flower in a way and aquaphene um, has a sort of a really useful effect in metabolic syndrome it's anti-cancer anti-proliferative anti-psychotic and anti-convulsive and it's actually used as a mainstream drug it's synthetic analogues that is have been used for prostatic hyperplasia and cardiovascular disease and apophene also binds with dopamine d1 and d2 receptors Another alkaloid is called benzoquinone, a paraquinone that's like yellow crystals. And, um, and it's got a very similar structure and behavior to aquaphene. Magnofluorine is a quaternary benzyl isoquinolone alkaloid with a similar aquaphene structure. And it's a sedative, it's anxiolytic. It lowers erythrocyte hemolysis it reduces nuclear factor kappa B expression and it's a, a beta adrenergic receptor agonist. Magnocurinine is anxiolytic, spasmolytic, uh, um, reduces bronchial spasm, so really good for asthma, and is a precursor to recticuline, which is also found in opiates and is a central nervous system depressant and is actually toxic to dopamine um, neurons and is being used in atypical Parkinson's disease. I could go on about all these conditions and all these words, but I'd be here literally all day, so they have to be looked up. Cori tuberine is also in the roots of Corydalis and Coptisis. It has low um, bioavailability and it inhibits prostaglandin synthesis. Ionane inhibits tumours in cervical lung um, cell lines. Anti it's anti-proliferative, anti-migratory and causes cell cycle arrest. Lotusine, which is in the sacred lotus, is a cyclopeptide. It's cytoprotective and it protects against the chemotherapy called doxorubicin. It affects the action percent potential of cardiomyocyte cells. It's anti-wrinkle and it's UV protective. The last chemical I'm going to mention has got a really long word. It's called benzyl tetrahydroisoquinolone and it's anti-convulsant, antibacterial, antifungal and a precursor to the proto berberines in the berberous plants.